Okay, hello. Let me check something. <clears throat> okay. We're back. Um, on this very um, important uh, video, so part B, this is part B of um, day 873 of Sex Change Sabotage by Dr. Suporn Wittanyusako of Thailand. Um, okay, uh, my name is Stephanie Grow. Um, as you already know, um, we were talking about stealth, and I was I was bringing up why it was so long for me to um, come out and make these videos. Um, and one of the things I wanted to go over was stealth and how it's affected that. And basically, long story short, um, uh, being stealth and uh, requires someone someone to cut off their previous life and when they change their gender role and um, in doing that I uh, cut off my friends, family and uh, prior existence and um, especially for a pre-operative um, stealth transitioner or a transgender person pre-operative uh, means um, before the uh, sex change and existing with um, genitals of uh, the male genitals um, keeps one from um, getting into relationships uh, after work getting into social activities because of the um, the fear of getting into a, a sexual relationship where you don't want to tell the um, you don't want to get into that because you'd have to tell your partner um, you know why why you can't have sex with them or why, um, you know, where, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, it's a very, um, touchy subject. Um, it's, it's kind of silly in, 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 uh, one, in, in, in uh, many respects because you're, you're playing a game, you're, you're hiding something. But, um, in any event, I was, uh, stealth. Uh, pre-op uh, transitioner and as such uh, when I went to Dr. Suporn for my sex change um, I had planned uh, on uh, having a more social life after that having a, a more full life with um, uh, sexual relationships um, being more social more confident uh, in, in being in the social circle more confident in and um, asking a man to um, go out with me, uh, um, um, doing things with me, being more com comfortable in the bathroom at work, more comfortable at work, uh, more comfortable so socializing with women at work. Um, the list goes on. So, um, having said that, um, I didn't really going to a, a doctor or an ER um, after these complications after going to Thailand and go, going to a, a doctor or ER in the United States um, I had to go by myself and um, I didn't have anyone um, there to go with me and as a stealth person or as a transgender person going to a hospital asking them to treat um, a possible embalmed groin um, uh, especially the groin of a transsexual with a, a, a sex change um, just had a sex change uh, that's a very um, a very difficult thing to do and um, the dead ends that I ran into doing that was also a time-consuming effort and so that was part of the reason why it's taken so long to come to this stage I had to um, find out that um, all the hospitals and were connected they it didn't matter if I went to another state uh, it didn't matter if I went to another doctor in another state 
didn't matter if I went to a plastic surgeon specializing in sex changes in a, in, 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 in another state um, and flying there, saving the money to fly there to see them, it didn't matter. I still wasn't able to get help and I lost trust in, in our own medical system to, to get help that, that, um, that they weren't going to, uh, instead, of, instead of giving me help, they were going to uh, per perpetuate um, perpetuate a uh, a misdiagnosis of sorts. So um, uh, that's one reason. The other reason is um, the first six months postoperatively, uh, Dr. Suporn does not want his patients to um, see another doctor, he, uh, not even uh, a physical examination, for fear of of damaging his work. So um, uh, even though it's hard for him to uh, tell if a foreigner is um, seeing another doctor, but in any event, um, I uh, I found it difficult um, going and getting a second opinion during those first six months. At the same time, maintaining a level of communication with his clinic that I was. Um, taking their advice so that they would not uh, wash his hands of me or wash their hands of me. That was one of the things he used to uh, uh, to get one to um, comply. He, w he would threaten to wash his hands if, if you um, if you went to uh, another doctor. Um, uh, so that was the first six months um, or first four and a half months um, at four and a half months, I went back to Suporn physically. I flew back to Thailand to give give him an opportunity to address my questions without having to rely on um, his uh, admin. And um, that's when uh, Dr. Suporn um, and uh, and and his care for me ended. So that's another topic of that I'll get into in another video. So it took me a month and a half, I guess, to adjust to that and start taking action in terms of going public, um, going to some of the transgender groups, trying to um, tell them what happened, uh, going to see other doctors to um, try to get um, some help. And in between that and today, I've been trying to go to many different hospitals all over the United States. Uh, with no success and a lot of dead ends. Um, as such, uh, let's see. Um, um, well, my case is complicated. It's it's um, embalmed groin. It's very hard. It's it's very difficult to decide um, how to present such a case to a doctor when you go to see a doctor. So that's been sort of uh, and 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 presenting my case to you it's been very difficult. Um, another uh, barrier is the um, impact on my career prospects. Um, I, having been out of work for six months now, I, um, um, I sold my car so I had some cash and I decided that I would uh, take the chance of going public uh, and um, taking the impact on my career. Um, it, I work in a very conservative career. Aerospace is very, very defense-oriented. Um, a lot of the, the the people that work in that area are very Christian, conservative types who don't want to associate with a person that's transgendered, uh, especially someone that's openly transgendered as I am now. So um, uh, that that's been a, a barrier to to get over and uh, a choice to make. Um, my overall choice, the, the, overall, the overall deciding factor in, in all of this is, is the, the choice to expose uh, what this doctor um, uh, is doing and has done to me and maybe doing to other people and um, exposing it for, for what it is and not uh, what some doctor um, post-operatively wants to, uh, he, like here in the United States, what some doctor here wants to uh, call it. You know whether it's a flesh-eating disease or some infection, uh, which I don't believe it is, and I believe I can prove that it isn't, um, even though I'm not a doctor. <laughs> um, 
I do have a Bachelor of Science degree in electrical engineering. Um, if that uh, if that uh, gives my case any merit, um, I do have a 12 years of software test experience uh, in aerospace, and that includes um, looking at, at things in in terms of a diagnostic uh, perspective, and and being familiar with terms. Um, uh, concerning, um, uh, you know, diagnostics problems, troubleshooting problems, um, following problems to their uh, solution, that kind of um, perspective. So, um, so that's kind of what what has helped me get through this process, this complex problem that seems not to have an answer. In fact, the only answer seems to be uh, how do you make a stealth person go public or, or come out of their uh, stealth existence. But um, having said that, um, figuring out what happened to me is another barrier. It took time for the tissue deterioration to become deterioration to become evident. So I had to figure out my own diagnosis. I had to um, I had to do all the work myself. Uh, when everyone else was ignoring me, my family, uh, the medical community, um, uh, the transgender community, and uh, even Dr. Suporn himself. So I had to do it all myself. I'm very proud of that. I'm very, very proud that I'm still alive today to, to tell the world uh, what I've gone through. And it's nothing short of, um, of what I, I would call torture. Um, I'm talking to you today, talking to you today because and I'm still suffering from toxic exposure. Um, until the toxic tissue is excised, I'm continually being uh, submitted to toxicity. Um, it's like um, um, it's like uh, if you were submitting somebody to a sand a sandstone or a, um, a, a sanding disc, you know. And, and until you take that person away from the sanding disc, it's continually. Uh, eating away at their flesh and tissues and bone. Um, I don't know what this effect is on bone, but it certainly is um, uh, affecting my tissues and, in an irreversible fashion. So um, I've had to figure all this out on my own, and at the same time, there's been this um, this uh, aura of the whole problem being like uh, catch me if you can. The uh, having a groin that's embalmed is is um, I, I challenge any doctor to come with, with, come up with a more tortuistic, um, deceitful act by another doctor. Um, it's it's something that makes you feel very alone, very um, targeted, um, as if you're being um, retaliated against for something. Uh, I've never felt more alone in my life. Um, very hurt, very um, disrespected. Um, uh, it's just very, very, um, very hard to uh, know that there's there's a, a, a crack in the in the world, a crack in the in the wall where someone could could end up, and it just be like uh, an endless hole. It's it's no one wants to uh, deal with you. No one people want you to uh, in effect just go away, just die, and and um, that would just make uh, everything better for them. And I, I don't understand it. I, I, um, you know, maybe I grew up in a world that was, um, you know, too much, too ideal, idealized. Uh, I don't, I don't understand um, how people can be so cruel. Um, In any event, I'm, I'm, I'm putting these videos up to give people a chance to to say, hey, wait, this is wrong. It's, it's time to help Stephanie grow. And um, with that, I'm going to move on to the next thing. Uh, that's, that's why it's taken so long to um, to come out from a stealth existence to, to finally say, hey, um, this is happening to me, Stephanie grow. Um, that I am transgendered. I, I was born male. I did transition and I did get a sex change and I am experiencing severe uh, complications on the order of sex change sabotage. 
and uh, sex change sabotage by a world-renowned doctor. So, um, so, um, okay, so that, that's, that's, um, that answers that one. Um, I have a list of things I'm talking about and I'm trying to put a red X over the things that I've I've covered so I don't have to in so we can get through this this video um, for this for today um, I've already commented on that there's no comments which I'm un unhappy about um, Okay. Okay. So I think we're ready to get into embalmed tissue. And I don't have a timer, so I'm going to end this video. I did. I did not start the timer. I forgot to. So I'm ending the video. I'm ending the video. And I will see you in part C. Uh, this is part B. Okay.